Hello all, it's Julia, the Mug Life DIY, and I am so glad you decided to stop by the Flippin' Furniture today. So I got a doozy for you. I found this piece years ago in the trash, well, on trash day. Someone was throwing it out and I knew I could save it, but that was like four years ago, yeah. <laughs> so today I am teaming up with my friend Amber over at DIY with Amber. Make sure you check out her video, which I will have her video linked down below, along with the playlist, and I will also list it in my community tab. So I'm basically gonna call this the project of many woes. <laughs> like everything that could have gone wrong, I swear it threw a wrench at me. So it was kind of already painted before, but I believe it was like a latex paint. So I didn't really want to use stripper. It is like freezing cold outside right now. Like, I don't know what in the world. We were having nice weather and now it's revenge of the cold weather. So I had to try to do this inside. And I was like, you know, I've seen some people use a heat gun and scrape it off. <sighs> Let me just say that caused more trouble in my life. <laughs> so one, the smell got to me immediately. I had to literally put on my extreme huge like gas mask kind of, kind of thing. Then after I kept going, I kept noticing that it was scraping into my furniture and I was like, well, maybe it's too hot. Maybe I don't have it hot enough. I think I tried every single setting. Yeah. <laughs> I eventually ditched this effort of scraping and I was like, well, maybe I can sand it off and see how that goes. Well, you'll see how that goes. All right, so I strongholded my little shelf and drug it outside and was like, okay, let's get my sander. Well, my first, my first sander, I didn't have any sanding pads. So I was like, okay, let me see if I have any sandpaper for my orbital sander. Well, apparently this thing is so old and worn out that the sandpaper wouldn't stick. You see that lovely little slice right there? Well, the sandpaper slipped off and whipped right in two and pulled off a chunk of the top of my dresser. Yeah, so along with some other little minor repairs that's going to be needed. So I switched back to my handy dandy hand scrapers. No, oh my goodness, words are hard. My hand sander. Yes, guys, hand sander. I, oh man, I always do the lowest number and then I work my way up. So I started with, I believe it was a 60 grit, worked it, got all of those really harsh gashes that the scraping did and I knew I would have to fix it, especially that other scrape that happened. But I kind of just roughed up my surface because I knew I was going to be using chalk paint. I took off all four of my legs and I was really hopeful that I was going to be able to clean up the little brass pieces and make them shine. They just had also some latex paint over them. So I scrubbed them really well, but that was also a day of my life wasted. <laughs> Let me just, tell you but I fixed a few of my little hammers or my little nails that were popping out in the back end that tightened it up really good and that was pretty much it for the other minor repairs that lovely little gash I had to use some wood filler this is actually one of my go-to wood fillers because it dries so fast and it's really easy to use I literally plopped it in there I wasn't worrying about how thick it was. I just wanted to get it covered and then I knew I was going to sand it down. Now this one day that we had, it worked out perfectly. It was about 60 degrees outside and I knew it wouldn't take forever for it to dry. The rest of the week has been quite icy, but that one day I got a little bit of relief working outside. I just filled in all of my gashes. What's really cool about this wood filler is when it is dry, it turns into the natural wood color. So you can see that's all nice and dry. I just have to lightly sand it. I use about a 120 and then I go up to a 220 to give it that nice polished finish. But 
that's it. It's so, so easy. And you can't even tell that I had another whoopsie or fail in this project. Moving on to a yet another day, <laughs> I am beginning my sanding project piece. And I wanted to kind of see, I wasn't sure how the coverage would be with that super dark spot. I didn't use any primer. This is just the chalk paint. It always says it has a thick coat and coverage, but I wanted to try a different brand. This is the, I believe it's Kills Tintable Chalk Paint. I was, I was being brave y'all. And it was actually my husband's suggestion that I should do this beachy coral color. I was so nervous. I thought it would kind of just be too bright for the space, but in the end, I do really, really love how it turned out. But this color is not for everyone. I realize that. I live in a beach town. This color is perfect. It is bright, it is springy, it is summery, and it just makes me smile. You can always do other chalk paint colors that is more your style, but I really wanted this a bright piece and just breathe some new life in it. I do my entire piece first coat first. Wow, that didn't sound right. <laughs> I like to do just paint everything one coat. And then by the time I am done painting the entire piece, then I can start looking at what needs to have a second coat. So yes, this is a little bit more time consuming when you are using a brush, not a roller. But for this look, I really wanted it to have a lot of texture. That is also not everyone's style. With chalk paint, you have a lot of different options. You can even add something into the chalk paint that allows for less streaking. You can also dilute a little bit of the chalk paint with water and use a sprayer, a paint sprayer, which I would love to venture into. Maybe during the warmer summer months, I would like to try some of those projects for you. See what I think, how I feel, you know never done a spray furniture paint project, but I do have some larger pieces that would take probably a week or more if you used a hand painting process. I don't know if I, I have enough of that patience to go around, but I really love this color. I feel like as the day was wearing on, the color looks a little bit more muted or this, it just, believe me, the lighting does not give the color justice as you can kind of tell. It just looks like a pale pink and not quite the coral. I'll have to look at the swatch color to see what the actual name of the coral is, but it is definitely, this is not the right color. <laughs> and you can see the dark spot up at the top section. This is after my first coat of chalk paint, how the coverage looked. Now, if you did prime everything first, you probably wouldn't have to do a second and third coat like I did but I have yet to find a primer that I like that goes alongside my chalk paint. I have used several and I'm just not a fan of a lot of them. So if you have one that you recommend that you use, let me know in the comments below so maybe I can try that out on my next big furniture flip. <laughs> so here I am again, just trying to pull all of these pieces apart. And let me just say, I was struggling. I'm like, how am I gonna get this little brass bottom part off? And then I was like, well, let me just pull it. I just pulled it off, y'all. Like, that's it. I just pulled it off. And the little part just came off. But because I did just pull it off, oh, that little hammering finishing nail, it went a-flying. So I have no idea where that went in my yard. I would have to get, like, on my hands and knees to find it. So I had to get real crafty when I put my brass parts back on my legs. And remember how I said this was the mini project of many fails? Well, my husband had just shined his military boots with some steel wool. So I grabbed the steel wool and literally started scrubbing each and every one of these little brass pieces. Yes, I hand scrubbed all of them to get all of that paint off. And that was hours, hours of my life gone, scrubbing, just scrubbing away, just, you know, going at it. And then, my husband comes home and he proceeds to tell me, well, why didn't you just use my Dremel? I have a tool for that. After I had been scrubbing for hours. <laughs> yes. So husband for the win, but I still felt like that was 
just too late. I was so over it at this point. He definitely helped me kind of finish and do everything. So it was like a three kind of process. He had a little brush that was actually a brass brush. And I just kind of got all of the rust or I'm not quite sure if it was rust or it was some brown tarnishing spots on it. Then I used this Brasso cleaner and polisher and I just applied a small amount of that, rubbed it into all of my pieces. Then I had this little white buffing like knob, I guess is what we're going to call it. Mm. Polishing pad. Yes. And I began to just buff it in. And that was the second step. Just keep buffing and buffing and buffing. And this stuff, oh yeah, it got all over me. I mean, I was covered in brass cleaner, but I was so determined. I don't know looking back why, but so determined that my brass would look beautiful. And just to kind of bring back just a part of this <laughs> antique piece. Now, the third step is a dry polishing pad. I went around on all of those pieces and it just started to shine. Now, if I had several more days of my life, I probably could have gotten the brass even shinier, but I decided not to. <laughs> so I am taking some of my Rust-Oleum Navy spray paint and I sprayed all four of my legs with that. Now, I didn't say I was done. After all of my sides of my paint had dried, I painted the top underside and the bottom under, um, under side of my shelf and it just gave that a nice quick coat of paint just to give it a finished look. Now, this is also another part of my life <laughs> that you just can't get back. People who stencil, y'all got mad skills because I still, I was struggling. <laughs> so with this project, I knew I wanted just kind of a more of a my bohemian eclectic style incorporated in so i wanted this kind of it looks like leaves to me but i thought it was a really pretty pattern and i began stamping and stamping now this is just a dollar tree step sponge and the dollar tree um stencil yes and i just went in. And I thought this was going to be a really easy, quick process, but it wasn't. I literally finished at like two o'clock in the morning, just stenciling, stenciling. And because I couldn't get the lines completely beautiful, because one, I was kind of crazed and tired at this point, I decided to kind of go back over and dry brush um, the coral pink paint over top after all of my lovely white chalk paint had fully dried. And I really liked the effect of that worn stenciled look, but if that's not your style, you can completely skip this step. But I have been wanting, yes, don't ask why, but I've been wanting to stencil some furniture. Like, I see the vision, I had the vision. I just couldn't get my brain and my fingers and the stamp and the everything to just coordinate. It was all a struggle. So this is the first row. The first row went well. That's where it stopped going well. <laughs> but I also, I have some different uh, stenciling pieces that I have in my Amazon cart that I want to try. There is this one furniture uh, stenciling kind of kit that I am going to buy and I'm gonna test it out for you guys. <laughs> but let me just say this was not easy and because I'm extra. I'm like, oh yeah, let's, let's add, let's add a line because that makes sense. I don't know. This was probably around midnight when I added a line. Don't ask. I just, it was, I was still stenciling at this point. Yeah. And yet another day rolls on by and I finally finished with my legs. After two coats of the spray paint, I was able to have them fully dry in this very cold garage setting <laughs> and I screwed all of them together. Now, remember how I said I had to get really, really creative with the bottom piece? Yeah. So I used some wood glue <laughs> to glue the metal to the actual um, 
leg. I'm not sure how well that's going to work with the metal, but it was a quick temporary fix until I can go to the hardware store and find some little brass pins. And here is my transformed little shelf. Now I adore this piece. I've had it for so long and I've been wanting to do something really fun with it and totally eclectic, totally me. I love kind of like this summer vibe. I'm totally ready for summer. Anyone else? I feel like spring is a wash for me. My allergies, it's just not a fun season. So I'm looking forward to a little bit warmer weather, taking my boys to the beach and us just having some wonderful <laughs> memories there. Now, this little shelf gave me a run for my money, like many of my other projects, but I just kept pushing through because I definitely knew it could come out the other side. I adore the stenciling and the dry brushing. It's a really fun kind of like washed out look, and it kind of appears like it's older than it actually is. I hope you guys enjoyed this project and that you will watch Amber's and everyone in the playlist, which I'm excited for. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.